Welcome everyone to Pressure Creates Diamonds. So in the, in the football realm, which I'll get into my background a bit in a second, but in the football world, we always say pressure bust pipes. But as we all know as well, it also creates diamonds. Clearly, we are going through unprecedented times, I think, to say the least with the coronavirus pandemic. Um, and there's just a lot of different things going on in our world that uh, we all are challenged in so many different ways and, and especially financially right now. A lot of unemployment, uh, a lot of money that we counted on coming through. I've, I've talked with people and they haven't received their tax returns yet, all of those different types of things. So uh, we wanted to sit down uh, and have a open, candid conversation to just try to be a resource and to try to help you. So this is Pressure Creates Diamonds. For those who don't understand what Pressure Creates Diamonds or where that comes from, that that's what it what it is. Pressure bust pipes. We're in pressure situation. But guess what? There's also an opportunity and a silver lining in that. Without further ado, my name is Brandon Copeland. I'm a Christian. I'm a husband. I'm a father. I am a son. I'm a brother. I am an entrepreneur. I'm a real estate investor. I'm also a professor of financial literacy at my alma mater, the University of Pennsylvania. Go Quakers. Uh, and I also play linebacker for the New England Patriots on Sundays. Uh, I'm extremely, extremely excited that di director Kathy Craninger, who I will allow her to introduce herself in a second. I'm extremely excited that you've taken the time to sit down with me and have this conversation to just help people. Um, and, and so without further, uh, further ado, I'll pass the microphone to you and allow you to introduce yourself as well. Now, fantastic. Uh, thank you, Brandon. It is great to be with all of you tonight. Really appreciate you joining us. As Brandon noted, it's, these are incredibly challenging times, uncertain times, and yet there's an opportunity here. And so we want to talk to you about all of that. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Kathy Kraniger. I'm the director of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, or CFPB for short. Um, as as uh, I'm sitting here with a, an NFL linebacker, I've got to say I'm a lifelong Steelers fan, as he already knows, and we are off to an awesome start of this season. So uh, fun to definitely be watching football again, uh, speaking of some silver linings. With, uh, with respect to me, too, uh, obviously family incredibly important to me. I wouldn't be here but for the support of my amazing parents. They instilled in me uh, a lot of values, uh, family, faith, education, um, but also service. And so certainly inspired my career choice in public service, which is how I'm uh, before you today. Uh, I'm managing a 1,500-person agency that is dedicated to protecting all of us in the marketplace for consumer financial products. And that is the CFPB. It was created in uh, the wake of the financial crisis. So we are brand new. Uh, we're not even 10 years old. If you haven't heard of us, that's, that's partially why. But when you're looking to buy a mortgage or a car or engaging in a student loan or, or getting other services from a lender, we are the ones that are there to both provide clear information for you uh, about your rights in the marketplace, but also how can uh, we ensure that those lenders are following the rules, playing by the same rules, competing fairly with each other, and giving you uh, good service. And so that's our job to set those rules and then to go after companies that don't follow them. Well, I appreciate that. I definitely appreciate that. And, and it is very helpful for anyone out there listening to know and understand that the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is our resource, which you just laid out very clearly for us. And, and again, like you said, you guys, are, you're young, you know, not over 18 yet. I don't know. I don't even know if you guys can download Zoom yourself. <laughs> right now. But uh, but ultimately, uh, you are there for us to lean on and use uh, so that we can make sure we make some of the best decisions in our lives and we also aren't preyed upon as well. So um, definitely, definitely make sure everyone understands why you all exist and what you all are here for and to lean on you all. So um, with that being said, you all know a bit about us. I see a few hands raised in the attendees and stuff like that, uh, but we wanna learn a little bit more about you all. So. Uh, we have a couple of questions that we want to throw at you guys starting right now. Let's see who we have in the audience. Ooh, 46 plus. Ooh, 
36 to 45. 18 to 25. Ooh, we're racing. We're racing. Quite the mix. Yeah, a nice mix right there. Nice mix right there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So the 46 and over club takes the win. 46 and over club takes the win. That's 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 a beautiful thing right there. I love to see it. Awesome. Um let's also let's go with question number two. What best describes your current role? Whew. It's lightning fast the way these numbers. It is, it is. Looks like a lot of people in the workforce. Yeah. We have some students, a lot of people in the workforce, a few others. And and again, all of these, just so that everyone knows, um, I should have shared that at first. All of these answers, the answers that you're submitting are completely anonymous. We can't see who you are or or anything like that, but we're just trying to get a, a gauge on on the audience. So we can this this is ultimately for you. So let me take a step back. We are ultimately doing this for you. So we want to make sure that we can get, provide you with the best information. Uh, you know, you took an hour out of your life to be here with us. So let's make sure that we we serve you all. Um, side note, somebody put in the question answer, go Steelers. Now, let, let's let's get let's get that out of here. All right. Like, we can end this thing right now. That's not what question and answer is for. Right. Uh, but all right. So I love it, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you guys, you guys have a hot start. I'm, I'm not mad at you. Enjoy, enjoy. We're just warming up over here in Patriot Land. Just enjoy. Um, so, You've had your years too. You've had your years for sure. <laughs> um, all right. So now we need to get into the reason why you all are here. So we need to really understand some of the most important topics that are near and dear to all of us. Big. These are the questions that a, a lot is is riding on, to be quite honest with you. So um, you all had a chance to submit questions. So, you know, I want to just go ahead and, you know, pull the Band-Aid off and ask you the question directly. What's your go-to karaoke song? That's definitely the top question of the night, for sure. Uh, 80s music, we've got, you know, Pat Benatar songs are definitely a, a hit. What, what about you? What about you on your end? Yeah, I'm a, I'm more of a a Beyonce crazy in love, you know, hit the high notes type of guy. No, in all seriousness, the other day I was on the field and at kickoff they were playing Beyonce crazy in love. And I'm like, hold up. This is I can't get in the mindset to go run through people right now. So, but but I, I did hit the high note, you know, secretly. That so. is an awesome song. There's no doubt about it. Can get <laughs> it you going. Is. Uh ranch or blue cheese? Blue cheese. Blue what cheese? about you? Yeah. yeah. We we agree. We agree on something. There we go. <laughs> I don't understand you ranch folks out there. What yeah. are you doing? It's no consistency. There's no texture. It's come on. Come on. So blue cheese. We agree. All right. You know, you might not be that bad. I like you. All right. All the Steelers stuff. We can put that to the side. <laughs> now, how do you personally manage fear or uncertainty in your life? And that's it. We're getting deeper, obviously, to the towards the conversation um, of the night. But uncertainty sucks. It does. Uh, nobody nobody likes that feeling of not being in control and not uh, knowing what to expect or what's going to come. And that certainly made this year pretty hard. I think for all of us, uh, certainly those of us that can get frustrated by that. So I think it's it's really um, growing up. I was taught this, but the serenity prayer is definitely a big one. You know, knowing the things that you can control in your life, I can control, you know, my own behavior. I can control my own attitude. I can look at where I spend my time and my focus, and that's usually what I do on on any problem, uh, whatever it is. It's it's what can I do to control it and and um, you know make the change, make the decision. Based on the information, you know, um, the other thing is there's just never perfect information, always other people involved and other dynamics involved, um, but you do the best that you can and and rely on on yourself. And, and that's certainly what I have done in a lot of different situations, uh, like some of the things that we've been facing this year. And I've got 1,500 people who rely on me uh, to make the right decisions at this agency. So that's been uh, certainly a stressor, um, but I think it's it's important to 
to think about it that way. And I have a, a ability to, to make their lives better and give them more certainty and, and control. So we've been doing a, a lot of things on that in terms of communication. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, I definitely, definitely appreciate hearing that. And I think, you know, to, to echo what you said, one of the things I've always told myself, and actually it's one of the best pieces of advice I've ever received as a player. Um, I remember my rookie year, I was fighting in a, a, I mean, we're always fighting in a competition battle for uh, positions on the roster. And one of the people I was actually in competition with pulled me to the side and said, hey, Cope, like you have to focus on the things that you can control your preparation, your your rehab, recovery, all of those types of things to get you to be the best football player you can be. But ultimately, you cannot worry about what I do. You cannot worry about what the other player you're competing with does because it's just going to throw you off of your game. You need to focus on – you can't worry about what the – the the GM and the front office are thinking about you, you have to focus on the things that you can control. So for me, in those times of unknown, I try to hone in on the things that I actually have some power over. And once I lock in and focus on those and just try to do those to the best of my ability, you know, we'll see where uh, the what the end result, what end result comes from all of that. So I appreciate your answer on that. My final final question uh, for this portion of, of our, our conversation is, do you view the glass as half full or half empty? It's definitely half full. I think that's, again, something we're going to agree on. But, um, you know, the, life throws a lot at you, but there's there's always something there. There's always a silver lining. It's always the, the positive um, attitude, which I think makes a, a huge difference. You know, again, those things that you can – uh, control and and uh, be grateful for and and move forward with. Hundred percent, like you said, uh, you definitely. I mean, we definitely agree on that. There's always something that there's always an opportunity in anything, and so you just have to search and find it. Um, and and we agree on that. So let's dive into more conversation more coronavirus resources, more money management tips, all of those great things. But first and foremost, let's hit them with our next question. We want to see why you all decided to take the time to come here this evening. And then uh, we will dive into a few things. So money management tips is in the lead. I wish I had the real fast like horse race voice where I could just, you know, kind of... <laughs> it out as it was going but I, I just butcher it might be a few people who can't pick one they, they maybe all of the above is, is what the uh 100 <laughs> perfect okay cool we also want to see the next question what best describes you homeowner homeowner homeowner, homeowner in the lead we got runners <laughs> Can't do it. Can't do it. It's a good attempt, though. Perfect. Perfect. Cool. And boom. We have one more. One more or two more. Last one. Yeah, these definitely help us uh, focus in on the things that are going to be most important to you and helps the conversation. So it's 100%. Yeah. Be no, no sense in us talking about receiving your stimulus check if, you know, 100% of you have already received it. But I actually see in some of the uh, question and answer that some people are, are asking questions about that. I also see that Someone Likes Friends in Low Places by Garth Brooks. Has that <laughs> That's another good one. You need to know that. Um, all right, so let's dive in. Um, let's start with, so the so reason why we ended up having this conversation is because when you and I first sat down, you informed me that there's 
pretty alarming. Uh, I don't want to call it a statistic, but it's just a reality that there are millions of people who literally have not received their stimulus check yet. Right. Yeah. Um, when you hear that, what comes to your mind? What do you think the disconnect is? Is there, you know, a, a digital divide or is there just a not understanding that, hey, you're eligible? Like, what do you think? Why do you think that that is reality? Well, it was true in the financial crisis as well, in terms of the assistance that comes out. There were millions of people who didn't get their um, their stimulus checks last time. And that was a conversation we had very early on in the pandemic when this came out. And it, it, we think it is largely a digital divide issue. You're talking about um, people who uh, don't typically file taxes, uh, people who may, uh, and, and you know, they may be family members, they may be friends, they may be people you see around the neighborhood, um, particularly depending on where you live. Uh, certainly in Washington, D.C., I feel that way. I think about it when I, when I see folks out there in hard times. Um, so realizing that you know, this is money that is uh, really they're entitled to get, and it is available to them. And the IRS actually extended the um, time period by which you can apply to get your economic impact payments. That's what they're called, or, or stimulus checks. Uh, so getting those payments until November 21st. So going to the irs.gov website, going to look at non-filer status. If you're not sure, I saw a couple of people that maybe weren't even sure, um, you can go in and actually check to see whether you've gotten a payment, um, whether you're entitled to a payment, you have to supply some basic information, uh, your, your um, social security number and address uh, and name. Uh, but with that information, you can find out where you're at and, and make sure that you're getting the money if you're entitled to it. I mean, literally 35% of the people who got uh, is roughly $1,200. There are some other things in terms of those who have dependents, uh, but who saved that. And you think about the big impact that can have in your life if you have that amount of savings off the bat. So few people have savings. Another 36% used it to pay off debt. So uh, again, this is a huge amount of, of money that can be incredibly helpful to people who are really in need. And so we're doing all, everything we can to get the word out on that. Awesome. 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 And like you said, there's, there's a number of different reasons and issues for people not understanding so so not understanding whether they they're eligible to receive it or not or or how to get access to it but can you repeat really quickly where they should go to for those that are unsure or haven't yet where they can go to get more information on how to get their stimulus check absolutely so the irs is the source of of the funds so irs.gov uh, we're also going to be spending a lot of time talking about of course the cfpb.gov and so we have a whole coronavirus page exactly. Uh, that, uh, that page has access to all of this as well. So if you aren't sure exactly where to go and you want to go to cfpb.gov, it is right there on our landing page. You know, help uh, in the coronavirus and the payments are also an easy link from there. And certainly for those who don't have access to it, we've been working with you know counseling agencies across the country, all kinds of social services agencies. Um, to try to get this word out to the people that really need it the most. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So make sure you take control, take control. We're going to get into some of the money management tips and all of those types of things in a bit. But one of the things we just spoke about is control the controllables. So if you don't know, or if you, you answered no, and you're not sure if you're eligible or not, make sure you go to cfpb.gov. You can also go to cfpb.gov slash town hall, and we'll have all of those resources there so that you can find out more information on whether you're eligible or not. Again, the, this is money that you may be entitled to. So if not, then imagine yourself throwing money in the trash, literally for, for lack of a better, better term. So, um, so let's, let's transition a bit. We saw that there's a lot of homeowners who are, are watching right now. And another alarming reality that we spoke about was the fact that there are millions of people who are eligible for mortgage forbearance, uh, however, have not claimed it. So, you know, let's let's put it in the real terms. I right now have uh, I, for example, am Carl from Minnesota. 
Um, I always thought that I kind of looked like a Carl from Minnesota. <laughs> uh, I'm Carl from Minnesota. I, you know, have recently been laid off from work and I might be able to make my payment this month, but I'm not really sure about next month. What do you think I should do or what steps do you think I should take to just even consider um, doing things for me to kind of hone in financially? Yeah, it's a great question right now. And there are resources available to you. As we'll say, we'll keep telling you to go to cfpb.gov slash town hall um, or just in general. And you'll have uh, a lot of different things that are catering exactly to you. But in the pandemic, Congress actually conveyed a right uh, to anyone to literally go to their mortgage servicer. That's who you pay your bill to. Uh, that's an important entity to know. So um, you can look it up. Actually, if you're not sure who that is, you can look that up on our website too uh, to find out who that is. But talking to them is step one. So step one is, hey, I have a problem. I lost my job or I've lost some amount of income or we're having a challenge. Uh, all you have to do is declare it and then you have a right to um, a, a period of forbearance if you have a federally backed mortgage. We'll get a little bit into this. If you have a privately backed mortgage, which that's not the majority, it's a small percentage of, of the mortgages that are out there. But if you have anything, you know, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, um, the Federal Housing uh, Administration, all of those loans that are backed by the government, you have a right to this period that's actually up to 180 days plus 180 days more. Mm -hmm. um, now, it is important to know that you should pay your mortgage if you can, because during this time period, it's a freeze on your need to pay, but the interest still accrues. You will pay more in the end, um, but it is still an important uh, benefit to you if you are struggling, if you're having a hard time. And so you contact that company, they'll work with you and give you uh, that forbearance period, that pause period. And you can also tell them, hey, I can't pay all of it. I can pay some of it. They will work with you as well on any kind of plan that's going to help you uh, repay in a different time period too. So there are a lot of rules, again, you know, that the CFPB oversees to make sure that this is followed across the board. And so any questions about how to do this, you know, how to approach your servicer, We've got that all on the website too to really help uh, walk you through it. But you have uh, you have options, and that's that's probably the most important thing to convey. I, I appreciate that. So so now again, I'm Carl from Minnesota. Put my Carl hat on. I'm a Vikings fan now. Um, I'm calling my lender, who's a government lender. Let's say a a, a Fannie loan, right? Um, for some reason or another, I'm meeting some resistance on that phone call. What would my next option be? Should is it, hey, let me figure it out and, and make some, you know, make ends meet and put some pennies together? Or what do you think my next option would be if I'm meeting a little bit more resistance than I expected with this forbearance conversation? If you If you hear anything from the servicer that doesn't make sense to you, uh, if you feel like you're not getting fairly treated and you didn't get the right outcome that you expected based on everything that you read, <laughs> particularly on our website, um, you can actually submit a complaint to us. Uh, we actually have a responsibility through our complaint system to get that uh, information from people. So again, it, given, given where you're at right now, you're, uh, Carl is definitely entitled uh, to that forbearance. And if it, you know, he has any problems, you can come to cfpb.gov too and, and submit a complaint. And what we do is we send that to the company. Um, they have to take another look at it. But we're also looking across the board. Look, is that particular company, uh, are there a lot of their customers having problems? Then we can actually go in and take a deeper, deeper look and go to that company and start asking them questions. Um, we could actually take enforcement action if they're not following the law. Um, it could also just be a misunderstanding. And so again, there's that um, escalation option to come to the CFPB complaint system and get another, uh, another run at it. Um, but really, for the most part, we've been working really hard with those companies. Uh, it's not just us. There are other government agencies also that regulate them, the states, uh, and the vast majority of them are really providing you know, this accommodation, working with their customers, and that's what they want to be doing. So. Um, 
certainly the, the general expectation should be that you say, I've lost some income, I need help. They're going to give you the option that, that, uh, that you're entitled to. Awesome. I appreciate that. Appreciate you sharing that. And I see some people filling in some, some questions, which we will definitely get to uh, a bunch of those in a few minutes here as well. Um, so I kind of like this game of playing dress up a little bit. I'm not going to lie to you, you know. Uh, so now I'm Lisa. Kind of look like a Lisa. A little purdy over here. Um, I'm Lisa from Idaho. Always wanted to go to Idaho. Lisa from Idaho. And uh, I just graduated from college recently. Uh, you know, I know that there's, a, based on the polls, I know that there are some students here, but I also understand there are probably some parents here who are probably helping some students uh, with a few uh, loans right now. So I'm Lisa from Idaho. I'm struggling to make ends meet just living, right? Um, did not get the the job. I, I had a job offer, but it, it fell through due to uh, the, just the, the, the place we are at uh, in the economy right now. So what advice would you give to Lisa from Idaho? And yeah. I do have pretty eyes, just so we're clear. Absolutely, you do. <laughs> uh, and Idaho is a beautiful place, so you definitely need to get to Idaho. There we go. Um, at any rate, the, the most important thing to know again is, is that Congress did step in and the administration's moved out on extending that, providing again, a period where your federally backed student loans, which is again, the majority of the student loans that are out there, uh, actually have a total freeze. So there's even no interest accrual right now. Uh, through the end of the year, you don't have to pay anything uh, in terms of on your student loan and it's not going to be any there's no interest uh, that builds up during this time period either. Uh, also, if you're uh, trying to get to um, a public service loan forgiveness program, you know, this actually, this time period counts for that too. So you're not going to be in any worse position. Uh, in fact, if you can actually pay your student loans, you're in a better position because you're actually going to reduce the total cost of the loan. Uh, so, so there are some really good uh, good things happening for, for those holding student loans right now in terms of making sure that they uh, are able to you know, think through what makes the most sense to them uh, in terms of moving out on this. So that is till the end of the year. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. You'll have to be prepared, uh, Lisa, to start payments again in January and looking at you know, your budget and other things to think that through. Calling that servicer uh, even if, you know, say you don't look like there's a job possibility in January and you don't think you could even pay when, when those start, uh, calling that servicer now, you have a lot of options in the student loan realm, uh, what, what's called an income-driven repayment program, which if you're unemployed could end up being a zero payment. Um, so it really is income-driven, even if you're already on an income-driven payment uh, plan right now, but you've had loss of income, you should call your servicer. And all of that information too, in terms of where you could be with student loans is on cfpb.gov. Um, so definitely things to look out for here. And even those private student loans, again, they're, they're a very, very small percentage of the, of the marketplace, um, but they are, they're gonna work with you too. So making that phone call uh, to the servicer, thinking about what you can pay, how this could work uh, is definitely gonna be in your benefit. Awesome, awesome, awesome. For a second there, I forgot that I was Lisa. And when you heard me, I was about to start looking around. Come on, those beautiful eyes. Yeah, I know. I forgot how, you know, his alter egos, alter egos. Uh, <laughs> but no, so definitely take full advantage of this. These are the types of things where, as you alluded to before, even if you can potentially uh, pay those things right now, uh, you probably want to go ahead and consider giving yourself some leeway uh, and, and calling your lender just in case. We don't know how long this pandemic will last. Hopefully it's over tomorrow, but we don't know how long this will last. So just consider your own financial situation, consider what you want to do and and execute. We'll, we'll talk in a little bit about creating a plan and then it's about executing on that. So my final, my final question, uh, in particular about coronavirus resources is what about my electric bill, my, my, my gas and 
and utility bill, all of those types of things. Is there any assistance that I could potentially get to to help make, you know, ends meet during this time? There's some people, so many people out there who are making decisions between keeping the lights on, keeping the Internet mm -hmm. going so that we can your, your children can uh, stream into virtual class and things like that versus putting a full meal on the table at night. So is there any potential advice or guidance you can provide on on that? Definitely. I know we're going to get into looking at um, what your bills are and thinking about prioritizing bills. So that's certainly part of this. But it is important to know that uh, really so many of those service providers out there have programs to help people in time of need. Uh, there are a number of relief uh, options uh, all of the, you know, the cell phone companies have it in terms of your cell phone bill, internet companies, uh, particularly given what's been going on with the pandemic and how essential it is, as you pointed out, for that access uh, at home, for school, for work. Um, you know, so they have programs as well. Certainly the utility companies do. Uh, there's opportunities, frankly, for others to even donate to those programs that, that I know um, you know, are critically important to people in a lifeline. So definitely the, the uh, you know, first, <clears throat> first uh, recommendation is, you know, go to those websites or call those companies and say you're having a hard time and, and see what the options are that they have for you. You sharing that. I didn't have a, a alter ego for this one, but I appreciate that one personally, especially also, like you said, the cell phone bills. There's, there, we'll get into some of the money management tips and, and really diving into details, and we'll do that right now. So, you know, let, let's let's dive in to some of these things. But the, in short and in general, I will say the details matter, right? There is no small decision. Oh, this coffee doesn't matter. Oh this, you know, this extra few dollars that my cable company charged me doesn't matter, et cetera, right? Everything matters when it comes to managing your money, managing your finances and, and getting the most bang for your buck, so to speak. So we also, I also want to let everyone viewing know that after this, we will be sending out uh, the, the slides that we're using for this particular presentation. Uh, one second. We'll be sharing the slides that we're using for this particular presentation. Um, when we do that, that'll be also your opportunity to just kind of look further into some of these resources and the things that we're discussing throughout the entire time. So, um, no need, I mean, feel free to take as many notes as you want right now, uh, but don't feel like you need to take down the slides word for word or anything like that, because we will definitely deliver all to all of you uh, a copy of these, as well as they will, uh, we will have all of this, this entire uh, conversation up on cfpb.gov slash town hall after. So um, just wanted to, to reiterate that. So money management money management so you know you have your coronavirus resources and so what i want you all to think about is is definitely figuring out how to make the most out of your situation right we are all in different places no situation is the same no person is the same so and and therefore no situation is the same and utilizing these resources and also these tips that I'm about to give you and we're about to give you so that you can, again, maximize the dollars that you earn and the dollars that you have already earned, what you have for your situation. So what you see to the right of the screen is a beautiful glass half empty or half full, depending on how you look at it. So for me, I see the glass is half full. Uh, and as we dive into some, so let's dive into some of these money management tips. Me being a football player, I talk football lingo, so I apologize for those who who aren't aren't Steeler fans, Patriot fans, football fans, etc. But I'll, I'll break it down. So one of the first things that I tell people, and it's actually not even on this screen. Now let me let me back up. One of the first things that we have to consider, besides take the pandemic out of this equation. In general, 
before we start talking about money management, it is very, very important for you to understand and know your why. Understand what you are chasing, what goals you have for yourself, right? There's a lot of people who are, are, are chasing some lifestyle or chasing something and it might be their neighbor's lifestyle or their neighbor's dream or the dream that they see on Instagram as opposed to the things that you truly want. I use myself as an example. I'm in a NFL locker room. There's a lot of jewelry going around, a lot of nice cars. This is my jewelry. The, these are my jewelry. This is a $14 Amazon chain of the Lord's Prayer. And these are, you know, maybe 10 bucks a piece. But I know that doesn't mean that jewelry isn't nice. Doesn't mean that you can't have it if this works for your situation. But I'm in touch with my why. It's not necessarily what I want. I would be doing something to keep up with the Joneses. Once you've gotten in touch with that, now it's time for you to audit yourself and understand yourself. So what you see on top here is know your personnel. As an NFL team, you want to know your personnel, know your quarterback, know your running back, know your offensive lineman, know your wide receivers, your linebackers. You want to know their strengths, their weaknesses. You want to know your opponent. But ultimately, before you can face up, before you can match up against your opponent, you have to know thyself well. And so what the first thing you want to do is calculate every penny that you spend on a reoccurring monthly basis. That is, what is your rent or your mortgage? What is your car note? What is your car insurance? Uh, how much do you typically spend on groceries every single month? How much do you typically spend when you're eating out? But so many people start to attack money management and, oh, I want to build wealth and, oh, I want to start X, Y, Z, whatever it is, but they don't know thyself first. So first and foremost, and first and foremost, let's let's attack and understand who we are and where we are spending money first. Right now, I know how much it is costing me and my, my wife and my family for us to live on a monthly basis. And by knowing that, I also can find and determine where there are quote unquote leaks in my boat. For example, real life example, real life example, I was going through some of our bills and I saw that my cable bill was up 50 bucks or so. I, I speak very frankly. I speak very open. That's the reason why I'm a professor and it's worked so well. I, I think, I hope some of my students might be on here. Don't, don't, don't tell me I'm bad right now. Don't embarrass me in public. Um, but my typical cable bill is $172, $174. For this month, for some reason or another, it was $202. I looked at my bill, what's going on? And I saw that there was some WWE subscription booked in the middle of training camp. I'm up in New England. I'm not in my house in New Jersey. I'm calling. I'm, you, first and foremost, you got to check your house. Hold up. Who's booking WWE? Is it the 15-month-old? Is it my wife? When did you secretly become a WWE fan? Right? Uh, $54.99 spent on this WWE. But fortunately, by knowing my personnel, I was able to catch it, able to call my cable company, get this thing squared away. And we don't have those quote unquote leaks in our book. So first and foremost, know the pennies that are leaving your house on a monthly basis reoccurring. And it doesn't have to be an overwhelming process. You know, what I would suggest to people is, you know, your first couple of months doing it, maybe you make it really, really uh, strict, make, make a really, really strict process where every single receipt you are writing it down or you're putting it in an Excel or, or Google sheet or whatever tool helps you keep track of those expenses. But after a while, you'll be able to kind of understand, okay, these are my typical, this is my typical number. And so now this is how I operate from now on. Next thing. Take the profit. Take the profit. Now, it's hard to talk about profit during the pandemic. And a lot of people are probably like profit. Like, I'm just trying to, to, to make it right now. I don't understand what you're talking about when we talk about profit. But for, when, when I say take the profit, again, that's a, the, uh, it's not just a football term. It's an investment term. It's just a, a general mindset of, hey, we've made a, a win. A, we've hit a single it doesn't all everything doesn't have to be a home run. 
We're not going to get rich or build wealth overnight. It's a bunch of small wins over time. But let's understand when we have made a small win here and let's take the profit and move forward to the next one and trying to accomplish the next win. What is, when, when I talk about this, that's when I think of the glass half full versus half empty mindset. And again, this this might not apply to everyone. I am very aware of that. But dependent on your situation, there are a lot of things that we are losing as a, a, a result of lockdowns in this pandemic. There are also some different things where you are spending less money than you typically would be spending in the spring, summer, et cetera. So, for example, you probably most likely judging by airline stocks and and just airlines shutting down some of their routes and stuff like that. We're probably traveling a bit less as a general population. So you individually individually may be traveling a lot less for work. You may not be commuting back and forth from New Jersey to New York, for example. Right. You might not have to spend a few hundred bucks on the subway every single month or or the, the, the train every single month. So what are you doing with that money? The vacation that you did not go on, the family vacation that you did not go on this, this summer, what did you do with that money? Now, again, some of it may be applied to increased living expenses, increased grocery bills, right? Uh, maybe we have to upgrade the internet this month. Uh, maybe we just have to, we've lost our job, we've lost the income. So now we're starting to pull from the emergency fund and from some of this, uh, quote unquote, these smaller wins as a result of the pandemic, and we're applying them to our living situation. And that is okay. But for those that are in a situation where, okay, this is, I am spending a bit less here. What are you doing with that money? That's not a question for me to ask answer for you is a question for you to think about and reflect on and understand, okay, can I be creating some momentum from this small win? It can I be paying down some of my debt? Some of us might not have an emergency fund or be uh, using up the, the emergency fund as we speak, but is there something that I can be applying this money to? But again, without knowing our personnel, we won't know where the leaks in our boats are. And we also won't know where we are winning. I know, for example, again, I'll, I always try to use myself as an example. We are not spending as much money on tolls, on gas, on travel. My wife, she used to commute back and forth to New York every single day. We are saving some money, a lot of money uh, with that alone. But those are some of the things that we want to lock in on during this time. And finally, situational personal finance. Again, gain some momentum from those wins and save what actually works for your situation if you are able to. I, we we want to really encourage the thought of, of start to save. And again, it might sound strange because not everyone can do that, but or you might feel like you cannot do that. But there might be, even if it's a dollar, if it's 50 cents, if it's, you know, for me, is going and 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 choosing not to add that extra topping to your your burrito so to speak right maybe there are some ways where you can start to save a little bit here and there and ultimately those small wins will add up big time in the long run anything we would like to add because i know i just talked your ear off kathy you said it well, though. You said it well. I mean, I, obviously, the saving message we, we will get to. And there are some who are just not in that place right now. But that habit is what all the research tells us gets you over that hump. It's the habit of saying, hey, I can actually save something. And this is what I'm going to set aside. And having a goal for it. I mean, again, what whatever uh, it is that you want to be saving for. I know there are a lot of folks that have some retirement-directed questions, but but certainly it could be uh, small things or big things. Uh, it could be a house or a kid, kid's education, or it could be the ability to go to that wedding that will hopefully get rescheduled uh, late next year uh, when things are back um, and we're, we're safer again. Uh, but you know, those small amounts too, to save or save for a present for someone. Um, those, those goals and the little bit you save, it's a great habit to be in. Awesome, awesome. Awesome. I want to give everyone a quick chance. I'll give you like 
10 seconds to take a, a screenshot of this or take a picture of this really quickly. Uh, again, want to encourage you all to go to cfpb.gov slash town hall and just check out the information that we have uh, that's on all of these specific coronavirus resources that we've discussed and some of the money management tips as well. Um, with that being said, let's let's get into some of the questions that we have. Question number one. Let's see. How do I protect my credit score and how can I improve my credit score? That's a, a little bit of a curveball. That is a pretty important question. Um, yeah. as, as you all know, I'm sure your credit report is the basis for what you get charged uh, when you borrow money. Uh, certainly mortgages and, and car loans are amongst the top um, things that you're trying to borrow money for. Uh, but First, uh, knowing that your credit report really does need to be accurate, um, that's probably first and foremost. So you need to check it uh, periodically. During the pandemic, the three primary uh, national credit reporting agencies are actually doing weekly free reports. So annualcreditreport.com is where you can get that. Uh, so you can go there and, and take a look at you know, what uh, what you borrowed from, what your credit card uh, debt might be, or what credit cards you have open. Again, to even know, hey, this is what your footprint is uh, in the consumer finance space. So take a look at that report. If there are any issues with it, uh, definitely act on those. And the ability to dispute that is there, certainly to any of the lenders or to the credit reporting agencies. Uh, so that's pretty important to know where you're at. Um, the next thing in terms of a, a, you know, thinking about how do you improve it, um, that accuracy is, num is definitely number one, but thinking about it in advance. It's not, uh, you know, certainly buying a house is a big decision. It's not something you just come into in one day. So you're going to build to that. You're going to think about that. Um, you're going to look at what your score is now. Um, certainly having longstanding uh, credit with a particular creditor. Uh, even if you don't use it, uh, that is a factor in in thinking about um, you know how you actually boost your credit score. Having that uh, record of paying regularly what you owe is also a huge part of you know how you build that credit record and, and get to a good score. So a lot of tips and information. Uh, we'll certainly have that on cfpb.gov/townhall. Um, but it really is uh, taking a look at where you're at, knowing where you're at, and then looking at ways. Uh, to uh, better manage that credit so that you can get a better rate in the future. Yeah. And one of the things I, I always challenge people, I, I, I love the fact that you you mentioned the being able to go and check on your credit report weekly now, but the, the same way that you have a bit more time at home is the same way that your local hacker scammer scam artists all of those things have a bit more time as well so definitely make sure you stay in tune to that um so that you again once you know your personnel you know thyself you can make sure you're calling out any fraudulent charges or or uh red flags that you see on your report the next question uh are there any books about money management that you would suggest um i think I have a couple and you know feel free to chime in but uh from a money management standpoint there is a book financial literacy 101 it's a free pdf online as well so you don't have to pay for it uh it's a book called the banker's code by george anton uh you can literally google it it's a it's a, a pdf online and and a, an am I, I think a great book. It really challenges you to think about money and the velocity of a dollar in a different way. Uh, I'm also in the middle of a book right now called the the Automatic Millionaire, um, and and it talks about not that you know not that being a quote unquote millionaire is a goal, but it talks about that habit forming process and that automation process that you were alluding to earlier. It's 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 about creating a plan, executing on the plan, and starting those small habits that lead to larger wins. Because a lot of people think that that millionaires are these people who've had major, you know, uh, salaries their entire lives, but most, a lot of millionaires have been made over years and years of just saving, 
properly and just spending well below their means. So um, I, I love that book as well. What activities, oh, this is a great question. What activities would you recommend to do with youth to get them to understand the impact of savings and budgeting? And that is a, a great question, as, as these all are. So fantastic to get the opportunity to talk about it. Uh, we do have actually a ton of recommendations uh, on our website. We're also, you know, we'll have them on the town hall website too, in terms of, you know, what you can do if you've got kids at home uh, in between classes and you're trying to get them to be occupied with this kind of thought process. So we've got a lot of good activities for that. I, I will say in my own life, in terms of what my parents did, it's actually talking about money, not not in a way. Obviously, it's got to be age appropriate, and what uh, you know, it's 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 can be something that can be anxiety causing for kids if you're talking about money problems to them. But more just the concept of you know what things cost and building a budget and what you're building your budget for, or what you're saving for. You know, having those conversations about money uh, hugely important uh, in terms of exposing them to that. And that, you know, that the lessons that, you know, we, we can't necessarily get everything we want right now, uh, but we can build for it. And, and so those kinds of things of having those conversations and giving, I, I, I grew up with, a, with a, an allowance. I will certainly note, I don't feel like that's quite as in vogue anymore, but, um, but certainly the, the notion that there is, you know, pay for, for chores uh, or some kind of responsibility around the house or things like that is, again, something that, that helps uh, kids, you know, understand the value of money and, and grow into comfort about that and, and have some spending choices of their own that they can make uh, within appropriate means. I know these days people are giving kids, you know, prepaid cards with some clear rules around what they can do with them and things like that. Um, so uh, at the right age, but we've got a lot on our website for that. And certainly Brandon's a, you're, you're a parent, uh, obviously a young, young uh, kids, but in terms of thinking about this, we even have um, books uh, for really young children. It's a whole series called Money As You Grow. So bringing the financial concepts into just children's books as well. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I think, excuse me, as you said, the biggest thing is just having the conversation. And of course, like age appropriate, but, you know, let's, let's end the stigma or the taboo around discussing money as a family, right? You know, when I think about my son, uh, instead of me hitting them with the woe is me, you know, I used to walk two miles from the bus stop in the snow and the rain and, a, and a, it was a tiger on the way, you know, I'd rather tell him about some of the money mistakes I've made and some of the, the money successes that I've had. And hopefully, it allows him to either replicate those or stay far away from those and avoid those growing pains. So I think that conversation and and who best to have a conversation with, but you, you, your most trusted advisor in life being your parent, right? So um, let's have the conversation. Everyone on here, let's start to have those conversations even early. Let's, you know, let's, let's, let's con encourage that and get that taboo and that stigma uh, away from money. Let's go. We, we have time for one more question. What is, this is a, I mean, all of these are really good, as you said, but is there an option for people who do not have a social security number to receive a stimulus check or should they just go to cfpb.gov and and that'll help them walk through that that process i think that's yeah. great yes that's what that's what i would say go there and and certainly we can we walk through that um scenario or issue but but there's all the information you could need to make sure that you can get um get what you're entitled to gotcha and then my final one would be what are the best options for consumers who are struggling with high amounts of credit card and or personal loan debt during this time? 
you know, that's it's definitely a place where um, you know certainly you can find yourself um, because for many people credit cards you know that's the credit they have available to them and they're they're using it in time of need and then they're suddenly realizing where they're at um, and not a good place. So we've got a lot of um, tools actually on cfp.gov to help you uh, along the same money management tips, uh, Brandon, that you were talking about earlier. First, it is understanding your situation better. So you certainly have to know thyself and, and get that kind of uh, understand your spending, understand what uh, resources you have available uh, as you look at how to tackle that, that credit card debt or any kind of debt uh, that's built up. Uh, so starting with that, but we also have ways to prioritize which bills to pay. And, and there are some, some different schools of thought on that, frankly, but uh, paying uh, really uh, could be paying what is the most expensive debt. Uh, so what has the highest uh, interest rate to it? We, you know, what, how much are you paying? So understanding that, um, and that's, that credit card might be it. So taking that uh, approach to tackle that because it's your highest debt. In some cases, you might want to and, and need to, frankly, build up some savings before you do that. Uh, for some people, actually, it can be motivating, too, to just pay off the smallest um, debt that you have, to be able to feel that accomplishment and that momentum. We're talking about start small saving. You can certainly start uh, small on that debt to try to uh, eliminate one debtor, uh, for example. Uh, so a lot of different ways to approach and tackle this uh, and, and think about it. Uh, but certainly it all starts with knowing what your resources are, knowing what your, you know, really imperative expenses are. And in this time of, of coronavirus too, knowing what options you have. And Brandon pointed it out as we were talking about the student loans. If you're on a pause on a student loan, it might be that opportunity to take those funds and, and pay down that credit card bill. Uh, so it's looking at the math uh, in some respects too, with the resources you've got available to you. Yeah. And I think you bring up a great point. Is there, there are, plenty of options. And I think that that's one of the most overwhelming things when it comes to managing your money, because you'll hear tips, you'll hear how your neighbor did it, you'll hear how your friend did it, your teacher did it, this mentor did it, this person on TV did it. But ultimately, you have to find what works for you and your situation. Uh, as I challenge my students and, and, and you know, as you go to cfpb.gov slash town hall, you'll find a number of resources and information. We're just trying to arm you and equip you with tools that you can ultimately use depending on which billing you're facing. I always give my, my, my students the Batman scenario. You have the utility belt. I'm just arming you with the different weapons that you can use based on who you're facing. So understand your situation, know thyself, is one of the biggest factors in doing this and, and managing your money the best way for you. And ultimately you, you will definitely have to make some tough decisions. There will be some discipline involved with it, but I think that understanding your why and having that North star is what helps keep you on that path that you're trying to get to. It's much easier to fall off the, the, the wagon when you don't know what you're actually chasing and what your goal is so it can also be uh, one thing i will note even on that particular question and just building on what you're saying and sometimes there are too many options there are experts out there in fact free resources to help you uh there are a number of, of credit support agencies out there that uh, are nonprofit entities <clears throat> i would say you should look out for some of the debt relief companies that are trying to charge you in advance to help you manage your debt there are free resources out there uh, but but that's also an option. And we also have that uh, information on the website. Awesome. 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 So in short, in wrapping up in summary, I see we're getting close to time. I want to be respectful of everyone's time. One, it has been a an amazing pleasure to get the chance to sit down with you and, and have a candid conversation about these things. I hope that something that we said today or, or multiple things resonated and helped you and not just you if there's someone in your family who you know may be struggling with something right now um or or your neighbor share this information share this this recording it'll again it'll be on cfpb.gov town hall i hope you took screenshots of our resources our social media handles all of those types of things because we will be sharing more information and snippets as we go forward so um without 
you know, without saying too much more, I just want to say thank you for sitting down with me. Thank you for taking the time. Um, and I hope everyone out there stays safe and, and stays healthy. And also the next time we get together, I hope we all can come and at least know thyself. And now we can continue to create some plans forward. So, Absolutely. Thanks to everyone for tuning in. And, and Brandon, it's been uh, fantastic to be with you. Likewise. Stay safe, everyone. Have a great night. See you soon.